The big picture today is of Chancellor Philip Hammond doing all he could to save, I think, his political career. And the way he's done that against a background of basically economic ruin is to borrow Britain uh, out of the hole that we're in. Let's be clear, the growth forecasts for the UK economy are disastrous. It's the first time in modern history that we have seen year-on-year -year growth in this country lower than 2%. And bear in mind, over on the continent, our European partners are doing way, way better. So that's a pretty bad and grim economic background for any Chancellor. Um, the Tories have traditionally refused to borrow to invest. They've always said that's a bad thing. Now, though, the Chancellor has said, we are going to borrow, and we're going to borrow quite significantly. And he said, but that's OK, because our debt ratio is now back under control. That's the secret here. He has given a giveaway of about £25 billion over the next few years. He has definitely tried to politically woo younger voters, particularly first-time buyers, by abolishing stamp duty in one fell swoop. But if you look closely at the numbers, you discover that probably only about 3,500 people every year will benefit from that. And guess what? House prices will go up um, as a consequence. So everything he's done, it's been very difficult for him to find a, a clear way through. Why do I say it's important that, to focus on his political career? A lot of people had the knives out for Philip Hammond at the Treasury. But I think what he's done today is managed to buy himself enough time to steady the horses and stabilise his own position in the Treasury. And that matters, because if the Prime Minister is thinking about reshuffling her cabinet uh, in the coming months, it probably means the Treasury is not going to change. Time will tell. In other big moves in this budget today, don't forget he's spent more than the money he's invested in the NHS on Brexit liabilities and contingency. This is an emergency fund of three billion extra pounds just in case things go wrong on Brexit. And I think the reason uh, the growth figures are so bad for Britain uh, are because economists are saying foreign firms, foreign investors are very, very uncomfortable about coming to the, this country right now. They don't know what the trade deal might look like. And that's going to have a definite impact uh, on the economy over the coming years. So it's a very tight position for any Chancellor. I don't think it's a game changer. I don't think it's one of those life or death ones. But I think Philip Hammond has done just enough to keep himself in the Treasury for another few years. Well, that's the political reaction, but what does the everyday person think of that budget? Were they even listening? We're here in the heart of Westminster on College Green. I'm joined by money-saving expert, Mr. Money-saving expert. I hope you don't mind me calling you that's that. That's fine. Martin Lewis. Martin, what policy did you hear today do you think will really resonate with people? 90% uh, of my Twitter feed right now is about stamp duty for first-time buyers. Um, of course, when people come to me, it's all about the practicals. Do I qualify? People, two big things people are looking at on that one. First of all, I'm buying with somebody who isn't a first-time buyer. Do I qualify? No. Got to be all be first-time buyers. Secondly, lots of different variations on I've owned a property at some point before I inherited a property. Am I a first-time buyer? No. You have to have never owned a property before to count as a first-time buyer. But certainly that's the, the one that's resonating to, to such a minute level. People who are in the, who've already exchanged and haven't completed, will they get this? Yes. It's about the point of completion. If you completed any time after midnight last night, you are eligible for this stamp duty reduction. And the other big conversation about that as well, which I think is fair, is what impact will this have on house prices? And the truth is, if you look at the Office for Budget Responsibilities analysis of this, it says the biggest gainers will be people who already own a house and are selling it, because prices will probably go up. I think the, sh the, the game will be somewhere between the two on that one. So prices will go up a little bit and first-time buyers will gain. But as soon as you start pumping cash into the housing market without increasing supply, you do increase prices. Do you think generally young people will be optimistic about what they've heard in, in the budget today? Is there re enough reason in there to be optimistic? Look, there are some sweeties in there. First time buyers, yes. Pumping money into building house prices, yes. The new rail card, which of course isn't really that big a help for 20, 26 to 30 year olds because it's off peak travel and uh, it's the commuter travel, those season tickets that they really want the prices to come down on. But at least from a political perspective, I think if the Chancellor's lucky, he'll get headlines about the young person's budget tomorrow. And people, you know, it's all about short term rationale, short term, short, short cuts. 
to what's going on here and people will see lots of young people stuff it's trying to appeal to that target market certainly and remember you've got to add it into the student announcements that we saw a couple of months ago the freezing of tuition fees relatively trivial the increasing of the repayment threshold from £21,000 to £25,000 not trivial a real tangible policy change there that will put cash in people's pockets and even if you look in the details today we're seeing things like HMRC working with the student loan company now so that at the end of repaying your student loan they will people still continue to pay after they've paid their student loan off because of the way it works with the tax system they're going to work to start fixing that so I think yeah the government is certainly targeting young people and it knows that there is a divide going on there I don't think this is enough I don't think this is going to suddenly get a whole swathe of young people moving away from Corbyn and towards May